Hi, my name is Bob and I'm renovating this 1973 Egg Harbor Sport Fish Boat. Well, hello and welcome to Renovation Sport Fish. This is episode 13 and I know in the last episode I said I was going to wrap up uh, the projects for 2014 in this episode, but since then I've had a little bit of a change of plan. Uh, it was getting a little too long and I decided to break it into two videos. And one of the reasons it was long is because I decided to add a new segment to the videos, at least in a couple of these here. And in this segment I'm going to actually be doing some actual work. Um, I was getting a little tired of just narrating photos and things like that, so I felt like I had to actually show what I did. Now, of course, I can't zoom myself back to, uh, you know, four or five years ago and, and film myself. It's not going to happen. So the next best thing I can do is just do a little mock-up and show all the steps that I uh, that took me to where I got uh, the finished product. I'm going to do this once in a while. I'll do one on painting, do one on varnishing, I'll do one on fiberglassing probably in the next episode. So um, yeah, we'll see how it goes and you'll see a little action instead of just a little, little talk and a little still photograph. So first segment of how'd you do that? demo on, on fairing with this piece of plywood here. Now I have everything I'm going to use for it laid out here. Uh, there's only one thing missing and uh, that's a dent in the wood. So now we have a dent. Now we can fill it. dry we're going to uh, sand it down with 80 grit sandpaper on a block if it was uh, a larger surface I would use a uh, sanding board or something. Okay so this is going to be our mock-up to represent the flybridge deck. It's a piece of three-quarter inch plywood. I've marked on here where maybe there would be ceiling beams underneath. Uh, this piece here is going to represent the, um, the lower support for the side wall in this case. It'll be installed kind of like that. And then this piece is representing the actual side wall. And that'll be attached on here like this. So the first thing we want to do is just put the sport on here and get it where we want it. Now I'm just using this big welding type clamp here. It's the only way I can clamp it to my little mock-up. But I'll show a picture of how I actually clamped this and held this down to the deck uh, while I'm talking here. Now, the other thing I want to do is mark where it is with a pencil. That way I know where to put the epoxy and spread that out when I'm ready to do that. And then I want to mark if these are the beams I want to mark where I want to drill. Now I'm going to be using just a couple of number 10 screws here. These are just, uh, they're not, they're stainless, but they're not good stainless. But for this, it's fine. Uh, and then I'm going to be using this countersink. the 
epoxy. I like to leave these screws sticking out a little bit because when you, once this is covered with epoxy, thickened epoxy, you try to put this on, this thing is going to be flying all over the place. So if you leave the screws out just a little, uh, helps locate it, clamping, and uh, you know, I can basically get it right where I want it, right where it was, right there. Uh, so that's what I'll do. So I have to wet out this side and this first with unthickened epoxy, and then I'll thicken up some epoxy and spread it on. I'll just spread it on this piece, and we'll get it uh, get it installed here. So I think I had everything here that I need to install this. So the first thing uh, we have to do is mix up some epoxy after I put on some gloves. I'm going to mix up enough to install this and put a fillet on this side of it. Uh, normally when I do a fillet, I, I either put it on before I fiberglass or sometimes I do it after. It all depends on the situation. In this situation, I'm going to put it on right when we put this on and then sand it and then we'll fiberglass over the whole thing. So that's what we're going to do here. use this is to get this in here to make a nice fillet for a larger one. I just like to just grab it and just swap it in there. But I feel like it doesn't get down in the corners with the bigger stick. So before I use the big one, I just like to wipe the small one down here. And this is what I'll use for doing a small fillet. Uh, some, sometimes like up in the corner here when I put the top piece on, I'll do a smaller fillet. So I like to get that in there first. Okay, so there's the fillet. All right, now I just, you have to just clean up the mess. You could use Pixo or something, or you can use glue, whatever you want to use. But I use this because I have it. I don't have my cock gun, I left it at the boat, so can't use that. But luckily, I do have another product um, it's called G Flex, and um, you mix these two parts together. This is West Systems as well. It's good for plastic and stuff too, so I've used it on all kinds of stuff around the house too. Um, so I'm going to just mix a couple, a little bit of this together and use this instead. So you're not going to see exactly how I did it for the boat, but you know, this this will work just fine. I used to use little brushes to get in here and swish around the um, adhesive. But 
I was going through all kinds of brushes. You use them once and you throw them away. So I kind of modified this popsicle stick at the end here. And I use this. And I've used this one, well, hundreds of times. And I just keep using it. I just wipe it off and use it. So I'll show you how that works. I usually just use one glove because I'm only one hand is going to touch the stuff. all dry. Uh, plugs are dry. The fill is dry. The next thing I'm going to do, and I'm going to do that today to finish this off, I'm going to chisel these uh, plugs off and, and then sand them with some 80 grit paper on a block. Uh, then I'm going to sand this fillet down. Now this fillet came out pretty good so I'm probably just going to sand it by hand with a piece of uh, 80 grit paper. But if it was kind of rough, which a lot of times it is, I'll use uh, a Dremel with uh, like a sanding drum bit like I have here on there. I also have a smaller bit too, I could use that. But I'm, I'm not gonna have to use this today. So, we just, uh, we'll start off just uh, chiseling off these plugs. And uh, I like to go with the grain here, because if you don't, you could run into some trouble. fiberglassing over this so it doesn't have to be perfect but I do like to look and see if there's any pinholes if there's pinholes in it you definitely have to fit, refill them with fairing compound or something and then just give a little sand but this came out really really good and uh, luckily in a demo that's what you want this was done on top of the fiberglass which I do sometimes uh, this is pre-fiberglass and then I put this along here. At this point I would put two coats of epoxy on here for the brush just to really smooth it out, especially in through the transition here, uh, and then sand that down and that makes it a really nice smooth transition. But since I'm putting fiberglass on it, uh, it's not really concerned. So that's it. I might do a little more sanding here to get this down to 80 grit. But you don't want to go too far with this dug fur because all this veining in here sands differently. If I was going to use my dual action sander, which I use sometimes, you got to be careful because I've sanded it with that and um, like the white, the lighter grain would sand easier than the darker grain and then you put your hand on it afterwards and it's just wavy mess. So I'm speaking from experience there and um, you got just got to be, you just got to be cautious when you're sanding with a dual action sander on a plywood. supplies I need to start painting and I'm not going to talk about any of it. I'm going to save that for a uh, future episode. It's just going to focus on painting. I'll tell you that I did use All Grip. Uh, not endorsing All Grip or any products I show here. I just showing what I use. Um, so in this uh, segment here you're just going to see um, my first attempt at uh, painting and uh, it was in the cabinet so I wasn't too worried about it. So here you go. Let's check it out. Well, I will talk a little bit about it. Uh, I did use the roll and tip method to apply this paint. 
That means you roll it on with a roller and then tip it with a brush to get rid of the air bubbles. Uh, the only thing I really found that was difficult was the primer was the most difficult. Um, it rolled on pretty good, but using a brush with it didn't flow out good and it was drying quickly on me. It could just be operator error, but I've done it a lot of times since then and it's always a little bit the same. Uh, you just put a lot on and then sand it off. That's, uh, that's the way to get around that. Uh, the paint itself, uh, a little goes a long way and that's a good thing because it's not cheap paint. Um, and I overmixed a lot in the beginning, so uh, that's one thing to be aware of. So, anyways, now we can really get to the pictures. So yeah, it was a good feeling to get that first painting out of the way, even though it wasn't, you know, up to really great standards. It was good. It was, it was good enough for where it was. So now I was able to install the front walls, the passenger and starboard um, seats, seat bases, I'd say, and the helm seat base, which was a round piece of mahogany that I had already fitted before. Um, so, you know, take a look and um, see these pieces um, going in. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. Hope you enjoyed it and uh, you come back for the next one. So until then, have a good one and we'll see you soon right here on Renovations.